Hello there, and welcome back to Metaphor Re Fantasio. Well, also, I'll not loiter I the have storm. realized I neglected to mention that I am Armagus, so I will continue to do so from now on. But aside from that, um. Well, I'll well, not loiter in the storm. Enough of my rap. Ah, just you. Now then. Now then. Listen. What? No. <laughs> That's why Why? You. That's right. I see now. Why? Utterly naive. Speaking of... You. As it is. Yet still they oppose me. Farewell. <laughs> See you. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Well then... <sighs> See there! All right then.
Let's head there right away. Thanks a bunch. Truth is, no. Worry not. Hmm. Hang on. Stop.
Wait. Taking that into account... Well then... Yeah. Hey, so... No, no. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like you to come, but... All right, then. to hear it. Well then. I'm 
about that. Pleased to hear it. <laughs> Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. The announcement is soon. No. Lovely. That will be quite enough. Excuse me. I need a moment of your time. It's gonna be tough. Happy to hear that. Well then. <laughs> 
What is it? It's time. See there. Well, I'll not loiter in a storm. Ah, just you. Now then. But... It's over. Hmm? In those days... Just a fantasy. No. Why? Listen. Don't ever forget that. Therefore, No pain can stop me now. Even then.
You there. That's... I'm off. It would seem that disaster was averted. Right then. Today's Forden's big announcement. Wonder what he's planning. I guess the church has to have some reaction to all that stuff the king said. Whatever it is, Luis won't be able to just ignore it. This might be a day that goes down in history. Gents, lend me your ears. Sanctifex Forden has spoken. The giant face in the sky, the massive rocks appearing throughout the land, and the mysterious voice claiming to be the past king. The Sanctus Church has officially recognized these happenings as the will of His Royal Majesty. <gasps> so it really is His Majesty. And so, as His Majesty has decreed, Whoever has gained the greatest trust of the people by the day of decision shall be our new king. This is a historic moment, good citizens. It's revolutionary. It's unprecedented. No matter who you are, you can take the throne. Anyone? Even me? If, and this is a big if, you are the person that all our people trust most in their hearts. Maybe king yourself, eh? You're popular enough. Me? In charge? <laughs> well, that's the last thing this country needs. Right, let's review what we know, shall we? First, the new faces that have appeared on the rock. It shows us who's foremost in the running. We've worked out that much. The top three of the lot are also shown in the sky. Suppose that way you can see their inspiring faces anytime, anywhere. Hold on. How's us comer folks supposed to stand a chance against all these upper crusters? Say you do become popular. With your face clear for all to see, surely that'd make you a prime target for assassination. Not quite, friend. Not quite. A valid concern, but one His Majesty prepared for. Popular aspirants, at least those who make it onto the rock, are protected by royal magic. Assassinations off the table. Magic chains will spring to life and bind anyone who tries. I saw it happen with my own eyes to Count Luis's sorry assailant. So, literally anyone could be king? Even a pauper? Or a slave? Or a criminal? But hold on, you mean to say we might not be ruled by Clamar? What does that mean for us? Right, I've said my piece. You know all I know. Now go forth, ladies and gents, and spread the word. Whether you're from our fair capital or the middle of nowhere, the crown's within your grasp. Anyone in the land could be our next king. I heard the announcement. The church has chosen to recognize this face's words as crown sent and shall abide by them. They conceded that one quickly. Though I suppose it's a hard thing to deny, what with the royal palace hanging up there in the clouds. Had they rushed a coronation for his eminence, Forden, it would have dashed any hope of reinstating his highness. A small comfort. I can tell from your face there's some bad news too. Do you recall those chains that froze Alsace in place? It seems that too was part of his majesty's magic. Plainly, any candidates of sufficient favor cannot be deposed by force. That's not good. No, tis not indeed. This marks Luis as nigh untouchable. 
I will still seek to find him. Yet, even should we stand before the man himself, we could not kill him. No! If we can't kill him, then how do we break the curse? What the hell was the king thinking? Grius was trying to save his son. He died for it. Even so, without this magic, no aspirant would be safe from assassination, leaving Luis to dominate through sheer martial strength. <sighs> we appear to be at an impasse. Everyone, have you seen Maria? Did something happen? I checked her room and she isn't there. She wouldn't just leave without telling anyone. I... I couldn't deal with losing both of them. I... I'll go look for her. You... you will? Thank you. When I think of what might happen to her... If she left her room on her own, she must have had some reason. Let's go search for her. If we head into town, we might find some clues. Why? Everyone was worried about you. Sorry. Papa hasn't come home. And I always come here whenever I'm feeling lonely. One time he came here to get me. I remember because he called my name. But I pray. And he still doesn't come back. Maybe because the cathedral is broken? Maria. Miss Fabienne says Papa can't come home anymore, but I know Papa's gone away. He's gone somewhere I'll never see him again, hasn't he? <sighs> it's... It's going to be so lonely. The loneliest it's ever been. But I have to be strong, don't I? But if it gets any lonelier, I... I don't know if I can do it. I'm sorry. I promised we'd all come back together. Why does everyone always leave? 
Mum was sick. The King and Prince are gone. And now Papa? Why does everyone always leave? Is it my fault? I really did my best to be a good girl, but... It's our fault. What? H how? You? Listen to me, all right? Your father, he... He was fighting a very bad man. We were with him, but we couldn't protect him. I'm sorry. I remember Papa saying something like that. He said, a really bad man might be our king. Is that part of it? It'll work out somehow. I'm sure of it. Hmm. I hope the next king is as nice as you. Then maybe things won't always be so sad. Mm. I think I understand the king's intentions now. Maybe this is the sort of tragedy he was trying to end. Maybe he wanted a world where the crown goes to one who acts like a king ought to. Not whoever's willing to spill the most blood to do it. You may be right, but much as we wish it, this is not a fight that might be ended through words alone. Even though we have to try. Sorry for leaving on my own. No, it's all right. Miss Fabienne, I am hungry. Maria, yes, that's right. Let's all sit down for some supper together. Thank you for finding her. It looks like she's worked things out. She's a strong girl. But we've more troubles ahead. How now do we resolve this curse upon his highness? If Luis is the curse's caster, we've got to kill him to dispel it. So how do we do that if he's shielded by the king himself? I wish I could report back, but the prince is still asleep, and we're losing time. I don't think going back to the village is an option. We cannot lose faith yet. There must be some further course we can pursue. Well, there's the church's announcement. I expect they're trying to stop a wave of rival candidates from flooding the standings. I doubt the church would accept this popularity contest if they didn't already have a plan to game it. True enough. I can only wonder at their aims. For today, we should content ourselves with rest and recovery. <sighs> Sorry, did I wake you? Laying here, I always end up caught in my own thoughts. Grius and Maria. The prince. <sighs> Just thinking in circles again. Not good, is it? Let's think about it together. <laughs> Keeping me company, are you? <laughs> you really are a strange one. My kind of strange, if I'm honest. That book... Is that the novel you're always carrying around? <laughs> Feels like months ago now that I spotted you buried in it on the carriage ride to the fort. Wanna read it? If you don't mind, since we finally some room to breathe. Oh, interesting. It's written through the lens of a fictional land. This bit's about the utopia's security. In this world, there is no blood-stained contest for sovereignty. The people choose their sovereign from among themselves. One cannot put a sovereign to the sword to seize power. Such an act would be met with scorn and judged as murder. Taking power or wealth by force is seen as the most shameful of transgressions. <laughs> Couldn't be further from reality, could it? We have a kingslayer on the brink of seizing the throne right now. And this idea of competing for public support. Here it sounds so commonplace, but the idea's thrown us all into chaos. Interesting. 
Perhaps I'm overthinking, but it sounds almost like the aim of the king's magic. You suppose there's some common inspiration? Still, I don't imagine this would turn out well in the real world. In public opinion, tribal perspective always divides us. Besides, does a decision made by the people guarantee its right? Tribal squabbles aren't always political. Take us Clamars, for example. It can be hard for us to see outside the bubble of our own worldview. We're the majority, and the tribe of the royal bloodline besides. That privilege can make us... insensitive. A problem with no easy solution, I fear. Lofty words. I can hardly come to terms with my own ideals. Still, the discussions helped clear my head a little. Thank you. I've been so fixated on killing Luis, but... Maybe we could look into whether that's really the only way to lift the curse. <sighs> Sleep should come easier now. I think I'll give it another chance. Wait, how long have you been asleep? Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Ladies and gents, have you heard the news? The curtain's about to rise on the show of a lifetime. To choose our new ruler, we're going to give all of you a chance to take center stage in a show of power for the whole kingdom. And we call it the Tournament for the Throne. Our aspirants will set out on a grand tour of the three allied nations' capitals, taking part in a variety of exciting trials. First, we have the Exhibition of the Brave. Slay a monster plaguing our fair people and bring its head to Oceana's capital in time. Biggest find takes the win. Official word is, this event's open to all. So what do you think, ladies and gents? Are you in it to watch? or in it to win. Stroll, why call us so early in the morning? What is that journal? I had Fabienne bring it up. Something occurred to me, so I asked her to go through Grius's personal effects. Hey, looks like he was investigating the curse too. There's a note here. Given the spell's complexity, it must have required a scribed formula. You mean to suggest... Luis possesses a written composition of the curse somewhere. And if we can find that... Yes! I'd wager, even if we can't kill Luis, we might still have a shot at breaking the curse. But... that attack took place years ago, didn't it? This curse's formula could be lost for good. We have little choice but to hope it's not. I'm not saying it would be easy, and the real trick will be finding it. We wouldn't leave it unprotected. That reminds me, a crier for the church was handing these out. A flyer for the tournament for the throne. Popularity contest is state-sponsored now. An interesting gamble for those politicians. I like the bit about all this being in the interest of fairness, those weasels. But saying it's being organized by the state. The throne's empty. This smells like the theocracy at work. Probably Forden himself. Do you think Forden's looking to fix the competition in his favor? He's been in first place this whole time. In the interest of fairness, remember? If he wins a fair race, he gets legitimized, and Luis gets put on the back foot. That bodes ill. Those with existing support could easily solidify their claim. Even should His Highness wake, he may lose the throne. If we don't hurry and find a way to get close to Luis, we're sunk. Ah, what are we supposed to do? <sighs> Let's enter this tournament for the throne. Huh? Hey, were you even listening to us? Besides, the prince isn't exactly in a position to take part in... Wait. It sounds crazy, but I think he might be onto something there. 
This could be just the excuse we need to get close to Luis. He doesn't care about your tribe so long as you prove capable, yes? That's what Zorba was saying. Which means, even though the world looks down on you as an elder, having the power to kill humans puts you in his good graces. You're going to make him a candidate for the throne? If all we need to do is get Luis's attention, then that's sure to get the job done. If we're lucky, he might even try to recruit us. I see. An undercover operation, is it? Quite a gambit. But it may well be our best chance at finding this formula. Just hold on a second! Getting Luis's attention is all well and good. But remember who's actually in life here. What do you think? Having heard all this, do you want to enter the running? <sighs> no point fighting my fate. Your courage is admirable. Right. In my ideal world, people can believe in their future. Their birth doesn't matter. No matter who someone is, they deserve a fair country. If it's to help achieve that, I will stand for the prince as a candidate for the throne. Sheesh. So much for being a guide. Now you're the one leading me around. Your resolve has marked you a fine fit for the role. I have trusted you with my life before and would gladly do so again. Good heavens. Haven't you put yourself in enough danger? Listen to me. I don't want you going down the same path he did. Are you really this set on running off again? to carry on his legacy. I see. Well, I'm sure he'd be glad to hear it. I'll be cheering for you in this mess of a competition. Truth be told, I wish I could do more than feed and shelter you. What's the competition? It's a big grand race to see who will be the next king. The whole country will be watching. So you're going to try and become king? Wow! Then I'll cheer for you as loud as I can. <laughs> you have your first advocate, it seems. Suppose you'll have to actually try for the throne now, eh? Your Majesty. <laughs> your Majesty. Okay. Oh, I love this game so much. I barely started. There's And there's already so much personality. Ah, that's the plan. That was the plan from the start. <laughs> that's the spirit. Well, if we want Louise to notice you, we'll have to make quite a stir among the people. Maybe reaching for the throne will do it. Does that mean you're not coming back? No, we'll be back. Although we might be a while. <sighs> I don't like when it gets lonely. Maria. But I'll be cheering for you. I hope you win the race. You'd be a good king. We'll see each other again. You better not forget. Now, we'd best get registration out of the way, but we need some legs for the journey. It's mostly lawless wastes between cities. Judging by this specified deadline, we are unlikely to reach the Principality of Oceana's capital in time on foot. I bet all these fancy nobles have their own gauntlet runners to ride in. A carriage might save our chances, if we could find one. Perhaps we split up for now. I'll leave you two to the registration. They should be taking entrance at the recruitment center. This should be the place, right? Excuse us. We're looking to join the tournament for the throne. I be young, ain't ya? And who's the kid? He with you? I'm the one entering. You? Really? I've not heard of any age restrictions. They're a problem? Well, I'd not have thought it, but you're an elder, ain't ya? And you want to be king. Well, the novelty of it might win you some looks. 
Could you just do your... Please. Can he register or not? Ah. Oh, an elder. Now that I think of it, weren't you in the pack of recruits that went off to the northern fort? Thought I heard they were all wiped out. What? We got a deserter turning up. No, they said he'd just dragged the company down, so they left him at the capital. He, um, got on the captain's bad side. Could swear I've seen you before, too. Well, hardly matters with no captain to verify it with. Go on, then. You can represent the lesser tribes so nobody complains. Whew. <sighs> that was a close one. And, uh, obviously, you're gonna need a carriage. Otherwise, the whole thing's off for you. Now, you're obligated to attend the opening ceremony tomorrow. It'll be at the plaza at the Grand Cathedral. Don't be late. We'll have to hope Hulkenberg can find us a carriage. As for us? I expect we should see about finding a monster to slay. If it's not impressive enough, Luis won't look twice at you. Some postings over there. They should be offering bounties on monsters the guard can't handle. Let's take a look. Looks like everyone else had the same idea. One of these bounties is bound to make me stand out. But which? Bigger is probably better. Hang on! There's nothing but small-time contracts here! Are you lot here for this tournament, then? Bit slow, I'm afraid. Most of my worthiest monster bills have already been snapped up by other competitors. How about requests on anything aside from monsters? Bounties include criminals, too, right? Hmm. I suppose I've got one of those, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Well, he's horrible. Heisme. A villainous kidnapper. Looks like the army's been trying to catch him for a while now. This might just be perfect. Whoa! Do you have any idea who that is? That man's an elite. An ex-royal knight, they say. It makes short work of a scrawny little urchin. You can be sure of that. Besides, didn't you hear what it is they're actually looking for? Oh, of course. It's about whoever can bring in the biggest monster head, right? If you imbeciles can't even get that straight, you've no chance of winning. They want kingly types. Not children play-acting. Stuck-up little... Is that the kind of competition we can expect? He was right about the rules, though. What are you thinking? Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. We're supposed to get a monster's head. So why are you going for a criminal? Any idea what he's up to? Maybe he has a big head. Maybe this criminal has a really big head? Come on, that's a stretch. And if he had a gigantic head, you'd think they'd mention it in the contract. Don't worry, I'll explain everything later. As long as you can convince Hulkenberg, I guess. Ho oh, there! Are you really taking the bounty on Heisme? <laughs> you three must be heaven sent. Please, would you listen to our plight? Your pardon, gentlemen. I'm Barton, a guard captain for Matira, a town to the south. The bounty on Heisme is up at my behest. A guard captain? This fellow's made some powerful enemies. We can't afford lenience. On top of his past crimes, Heisme has stooped to abducting our wee ones. Our children. Selling them off, some say. If our city becomes known for nightly disappearances, what sane resident would stay? Community and trade will dwindle and die. But he's just a lone kidnapper, right? Even if he's some infamous criminal, why can't the guard handle it? That's the trouble. He makes his hideout somewhere too dangerous for our soldiers to tread. Deep in the territory of vicious giant worms, we've no idea how he manages to operate out there without getting devoured himself. I see. Tricky problem indeed. I had no choice but to swallow my pride and post a bounty. Yet no matter how many times I renew the bill, none have taken it. A pitiful sight, isn't it? 
A soldier who can't protect his own, whether by strength or by surrender. Laugh if you must. We would never laugh at such a plight. You only cast away your honor in the name of protection. Nothing pitiful in that. Swallow your pride no more, man. We'll take your contract. Ah, thanks to you. That you'd accept such a perilous request, even with this tournament looming over everything. Closure. Thank you all. And thank God for bringing you to me. In that case, we shall meet in Matira, the old castle town. Please, make haste. Well, no backing out of this now. You sure this is what we want? The way I see it, if we want to make a big impact this late, it's going to take some creativity. Besides, this is apparently a knight-turned-kidnapper. The man can't be allowed to go on. What would His Royal Highness do in our place? I guess that's fair. I'll convince Hulkenberg. Somehow. You go on and accept the contract. <laughs> what is in a blazing? Demo man go to art. No, thank you. <sighs> what to do? Oh, look at that, dude. <sighs> No registration issues, I trust? No, indeed. And we found ourselves a perfect target. Fine work. Stroll. See? She's convinced. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry about it. I'll prepare a map of the surrounding areas as well. But never mind that. Have you found us a kingly carriage? Well, I have made some arrangements. How best to put it? The vessel itself is without peer. Supposedly, it will come to us on the day of the opening ceremony. Uh, you don't sound too sure about that. Oh, uh, no, I'm certain. All I mean to say is, well, you shall soon see for yourself. Well, under the circumstances, I'll take what we can get. And setting that up in a day? Not so bad having a knight on our side. <laughs> you needn't speak so. In truth, I've just resigned from the Knight's Order. Though it is only my bond of service, I relinquish, not my title. We will shortly be seeking Luis's esteem. Should it come to light that I am a Knight in active service, it may jeopardize our efforts. Still, you didn't hesitate to leave. I can tell you're serious about this. It was not an abrupt parting. I've come to doubt the Order since returning to find them serving the Santifex and not the Royals. Those who refused the Church's rule were cast out for their defiance. I only hope those fallen knights found useful employ elsewhere. Sounds like you've been through a lot too. Well, in any case, we can focus on our bounty contract now. Let's make sure we get some proper rest tonight. <laughs> Let's rest. Hey! Yeah. Don't push yourself too much. Now then. Hello. <laughs> All right then. Ah. 
Alright, this is a good stopping point. A really good one. That's a lot of story. <laughs> In this episode. And... Well... Let's see how much more there is before I get to do another dungeon. Also... Heishmal. If I recall from the trailers... Okay, maybe I won't say it. It might spoil you anyone who hasn't actually seen anything of the trailers. So, um, instead, I'll talk about. I think I, I think I know where we're getting the giant monster head from. In this case, perhaps a certain human. Yeah. On the bright side, though, the art book actually doesn't spoil you that much. It only spoils you up to three of them. So. I have no idea about the rest of them, except maybe one that I think is an octopus. I mean, it's on the map, so I assume it's a human that we eventually find. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed Metaphor Fantasio. Kindly consider liking, commenting, or subscribing down below if possible. Please and thank you very much. Also, very kindly appreciated. And with... I'm not gonna lie. The Maria thing actually did kind of tear me up. Due to personal reasons. But anyway, I suppose with that as our awkward ending note, I bid you all bye-bye. For now, anyway.